Hi kiddos, welcome back for a little extra today. We are going to go to history and talk about King Cyrus the Great of Persia. Now hopefully you remember hearing about him a few weeks ago, but we're going to focus a little more on him because he's one of those super cool people in history. And let me tell you a little bit about why before we go to his story. So we've been learning a lot about the world, the world of man that's searching for God, that they know they have things written on their hearts, they know there's an answer to those things written on their hearts, but they don't know that answer. So this would be people like the Babylonians or Sargon or even the Greeks that we're learning about now. Those people were all looking for God, looking for answers. And then you have what seems to be a separate story, the Israelites or the Jewish people who had God revealed to them through Abraham and Moses. And had covenants with him. They knew his promises. They knew that he loved them and had plans for them. And those two things, when we're learning about them, sometimes seem to be separate. Here's what's going on in the world. Here's what's going on with God's chosen people. And they don't seem to collide. But in Cyrus the Great, he, these two worlds come together. And something amazing happens. So you've got the world searching for God and the world who knows about God. And the two are going to come together in the story of Cyrus. Hopefully you remember that his grandfather had been told that his grandson would take over as king and that grandfather did a terrible thing and sent the baby away to be killed, but the man who was supposed to kill him couldn't do it and he was raised by shepherds and came back and did take the kingdom from his grandfather. And that's where we're going to pick up the story today from Story of the World. So this is called Cyrus the Great. Cyrus was now the king of the Medes and the Persians. He was a great warrior, but he was also known as a good and fair king. Even though he had conquered the Medes, he let the Median people stay in their homes. He even let Median noblemen have some power in his new combined empire. After all, his empire was so big that he needed help. He couldn't collect all the taxes, judge all the court cases, and settle all the problems himself. So he made both Persians and the Medians officials in his kingdom. The Medians felt that they were being treated well, so they didn't try to rebel against Cyrus. So he sounds more like a monarch than a tyrant. Remember, a tyrant is someone who just does what they want, doesn't worry about the people under them. Cyrus sounds like a good and caring king. Now Cyrus decided to make his empire even bigger. He wanted to conquer Asia Minor. Asia Minor was ruled by King Croesus, who was the richest king in the world. He had more gold than anyone else. Cyrus knew that if he could conquer Croesus, he would be rich as well. So he marched his army up to the kingdom of Croesus and conquered it. He captured Croesus and made him stand up on the walls of his city and watch as Persian soldiers looted it. That means take all the good stuff. The soldiers went all through the city, carrying away armloads of treasures, gold coins, and jewelry. But Croesus just watched calmly. So here is a potential portrait of what King Cyrus might look like. We're going to try to draw that in a little bit. Finally, Cyrus said, how can you be so calm? They are robbing you of all your gold. No, they aren't, Croesus said. The city belongs to you now. They are actually stealing from you. When Cyrus heard this, he stopped the soldiers at once and took all the gold back. Next, Cyrus turned his army to the east. Cyrus marched the Persian army all the way over to the Indus River. Now he ruled all the land between Asia Minor and India. The Persian Empire was as wide as it was tall. Cyrus wasn't done conquering yet. There was one big enemy left for him, Babylon. Remember, the Babylonians had been ruling in Mesopotamia for a long time. They were an old kingdom and a very powerful kingdom. Cyrus wanted all that good fertile land between the Tigris and Euphrates River. But he knew that the Babylonian army was very strong. However, Cyrus had one big advantage over Babylon. The Persians liked Cyrus because he was a good, fair king, but the Babylonians hated their king. He had left the city of Babylon and had gone away to live in a distant desert. In his place, he had given his son, Belshazzar, control over the city. Belshazzar spent too much money on feasting and drinking and not enough on the people of Babylon. So when Cyrus marched his army to Babylon, he didn't meet much resistance. The Babylonians were sick and tired of their own king, 
so they didn't fight very hard when Cyrus's army arrived at the walls. Some of the Babylonians even opened the gates from inside and let him in. Babylon fell to the Persians in 539 BC. Remember, that means before Christ. So a little over 500 years before Jesus. When Cyrus took over Babylon, he also took over Canaan. Canaan, also called Palestine, had been the home of the Jewish people until Babylon and Assyria conquered it. The Babylonians and Assyrians had made the Jewish people leave their homes. Do you remember this? So if you think back to our prophets, they kept telling the people of Israel, if you don't change your ways, you will have to leave your home. And then remember we talked about how the ten northern tribes had to leave first, and then a little while after that, the southern tribes, the two left in the bottom, had to leave, and that's called the Great Exiles. They were taken out of their homeland, and that's where we talked about the prophet Daniel was living in a foreign land under King Belshazzar when he had to go through all those terrible things. And it's because they have been taken out of their home. Tomorrow, you will find out what happens when these two worlds collide. Two worlds collide because now King Cyrus has taken over Babylon, which had taken over the Jewish people. So he is now the king of the Jewish people in exile. We will talk about that tomorrow. However, today we are going to put him into our black books, okay? And we're going to write a sentence about how he was a good and beloved king. Let me make sure I have that correct before I start writing words. Cyrus was a good and beloved king of Persia. So I will write that in print and cursive for you first, and then I'll show you quickly how to do a picture. So Cyrus was a good... and beloved king of Persia. So kinders, here's yours. If you need to freeze the screen and look at it, I will also put the words in the description of the video. And then firsties in cursive, Cyrus was a good and beloved king of Persia. There you go. Now, if we want to go back and try to draw him, I really liked that portrait that was in the book. So I'm going to go ahead and do his head, okay, his neck his shoulders and he had on a really cool flowing cape type thing. So I'm going to go ahead and try to replicate that. So I've got my little outline of my guy. I'm going to do the top and then to show the flowing cape I can just do two lines that go out like that. Kind of like if you think of an upside down, no not upside down, think of a mountain. Okay, up, down, there he is in his flowing cape. If you noticed, his crown was a little different, but I'm gonna make a normal crown so that I remember he's a king. And you erase that part in there. Oh, okay. So I've got his crown on the top. I erased his head in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead, give him ears and eyes. And then we'll give him a nose. He was a good king. I don't know if we'd call him a joyful man. You can give him a smile if you wish. Kind of a fierce face, okay? Got his beard and his mustache there, his eyebrows. Okay, and then if you wish, you can add in the background details like his kingdom or all the people behind him who love him because he was a good king. So here is King Cyrus. He should be colored when you're done. And your sentence one more time. Cyrus was a good and beloved king of Persia. And tomorrow in our extra lesson, We'll talk about what he did for the Israelites. All right, there you go.